Hi everybody, I'm Jeanette Kakariga. I'm a professional ballet dancer and I'm here to talk about the Nutcracker season and to hopefully give some young professionals out there perhaps having one of their first Nutcracker runs as an adult having to take care of themselves and then also perform way more than usual on top of it, a little bit of help and guidance so that you don't end up feeling burnt out with a loss of motivation, a loss of inspiration during what's supposed to be a really happy time of the year. And we all love what we do, we're really passionate about it, but there's just something a little bit soul sucking about having to do like 35, 40, 45, 50. Yes, I've done 50 nutcrackers during the holiday season before. And you see all these other people out there enjoying their families and going Christmas shopping and enjoying themselves and having that extra time off usually. And we're actually busier than usual. I do have to preface though with the fact that I am personally not victimized by Nutcracker this year because I work in Munich, Germany, uh, in Europe. And so they don't always do a Nutcracker it's not so important to sell tickets as it is in the US where there's just so many shows or also when I worked at English National Ballet and that was also a really important part was selling the tickets for Nutcracker. But I have been there so Although this is geared more towards adults, young professionals, I am sure that anybody could get some ideas from this video, even if you are a student. So let's just get into it. First one is very basic. It is just to stay hydrated. And although it's very basic, I think it is an often forgot about part of what is necessary to take care of yourself. Especially on rest days, I think it is easy to lose track of how much water you're really getting into your body and it is obviously so important our bodies are i don't even remember the number like 70 percent water or something so obviously this is important when i forget to drink enough water on rest days i get terrible headaches i get irritable i'm cranky so that is definitely something that we often forget oh you guys can't see i have I have a penguin sweater on. I wore it on purpose to get in the spirit of December. All right, so moving on to my second tip, it is nap. Please nap. They're so good for you to nap. There's different kinds of naps. There's afternoon naps that could go on for like an hour even when you maybe have a little bit of time, you have a break, you're at home and you can sleep in your own bed. I think those are really important leading up to shows, also even after shows to recover from them. On rest days, taking naps in the middle of the day is really great. Get that in there between, you know, all the cooking and the cleaning that you have to do because you're an adult now and you got to take care of yourself. Because yeah, like we're dancers and we actually have to do all the adult things as well and then rest our bodies and get ready for the work we all in one day because usually during busy times of the year we only get one day off a week don't we <laughs> although sometimes I don't even get a day off and then they're made up to me later but then they're not and then I just get paid overtime but anyway another kind of nap that is especially important for those who have to do many double shows like I had to do basically all double shows all week long when I was at ENB um, what was great was to, well, it worked for me, is to drink a coffee, take a 20 minute power nap. You know, you have to have the alarm. You prop the feet up so you're not like overly comfortable, but you can sleep because you're freaking exhausted. And you drain the blood from the legs so you're kind of doing a two for there. And then before the caffeine can kick in, you fall asleep. And then when you wake up from the 20 minute nap, you feel awake because now the caffeine has kicked in, you got your power nap in, and you drained your feet so that they're less swollen for the next show. So you're accomplishing a lot in a 20 minute period. And I, I don't know, it worked really, really well for me. Power naps were absolutely essential. And it wasn't just me. I think all the girls in their dressing rooms at ENB did this. Actually, I know the guys did too. This is essential to getting through all those nutcrackers, in my opinion. Also, even if you don't feel physically exhausted yet because all you're doing is learning the choreography of Nutcracker, although I think at the point that I have 
published this video, everybody is in their run of Nutcracker, but maybe for next season or another program. When you have to learn lots of choreography, that also tires out your brain and that is physically draining. And you also need a nap for that. Even if you don't feel like you're sweating and going crazy so much in learning rehearsals, your brain is exhausted. So naps are beneficial then too. Next tip is to focus on what you can improve. When we have this many shows and you're kind of repeating the same roles over and over and over again, and maybe you've also even done it the year before, maybe the year before that, and it's just, it feels like Groundhog Day a little bit. I think it can still really help to focus on technical things that you can improve and think, okay, maybe I could do a better fifth there. I can be sure that my arms are really correctly placed in that part of the choreography. I sometimes would just go over choreography, even though I've done it like a thousand times, just because I wanna like go through it and think about all those little technical things that I can improve upon. And I think that that's motivating because, you know, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse, <laughs> unfortunately, in our profession. I have another tip that is very similar. Um, I already had this idea in mind for the video, but I did ask on Instagram everybody's opinions on how to avoid burnout, and this was one person's answer. It was to focus on maybe artistry one show, port bra one show, jumping higher one show, maybe smiling more that show. I also feel like sometimes I would purposefully say, this is a Disney Nutcracker, we're in a Disney movie this time. I would do that for Swan Lake as well, like for first act and third act, because we also did a lot of Swan Lakes and that was exhausting. I feel like playing little games with yourself like that and giving each show a little reason to focus on something is really helpful and it motivates you. Very similar to the technical part, but this isn't so much technique, it's more of like a thought and an inspiration for the whole show. And speaking of this question that I asked on Instagram, usually I get quite a lot of responses considering that I only have like 12,000 followers, not like 10 times that. But this time I really didn't get very many. And it makes me come to the conclusion that people don't know how to avoid burnout because it inevitably happens to us. And I found that kind of sad. So I'm really hoping that maybe some of the stuff I say can be beneficial and maybe there are things that people haven't thought of. Another really fun tip that I particularly enjoy is to get in on a group activity, perhaps in the changing room. So it could be a, an advent calendar that everybody is a part of. It could be a secret Santa. It could be writing all the roles that you guys have performed over the entire run. So then you can see like what our changing room accomplished over the whole Nutcracker season. It can also be bringing in food or dessert to share with each other. It could be going out for a coffee or a lunch during the break and not just going out on your own. It could even be a stay in movie afternoon. And of course, this is all assuming that you have a lot of double shows to do because that was my experience with crazy runs of Nutcracker was that we had double shows and so we had these couple of hours that were very precious to us between one show and when we would have to get ready and get warmed up again for the next show. So I find that this time can be really nice. Yes, yeah, sometimes you need alone time. I'm introverted so I definitely do need my alone time. But I think also it can be really nice to work as a team and feel like one company and you're working towards one goal, one show together that's really good. Give each other something to look forward to is really the point. Oh, another thing that we've been doing recently in our changing room, although it's not like anything to do with Nutcracker, it's just like having to be back at work full time when we've been going through all this corona stuff and maybe we're not really used to being at work all the time and having to work full time. We started coordinating our leotards for class and rehearsals. So we'd have a theme one day that, oh, today is flower day and then today is red day and then today is velvet day or long sleeves day. So also that's a good group activity. Another important tip, so, so important, is to stay on top of eating well. For me, now that I work in a theater where, unless it's a double show, which does not happen nearly 
nearly as often as it used to at ENB. We're required by law to have a break in the afternoon. So actually pretty much everybody goes back home. So what I've been doing recently when I don't have to go in super early to do my hair and makeup, because sometimes I do, if I don't, I try and make a lunch and I also even try to pre-make dinner so that then we can just heat it up when we get home after we're done dancing. And that's really important, first of all, to save money as an adult because yes, we have to do that. And then also, of course, it's good to eat homemade meals instead of eating out all the time. Besides for the money reason, it's also just not as good for you and maybe it just doesn't make you feel right. I love eating out, but I also really love cooking and I I really love eating the food I've made. So for me, it's important to carve out that time beyond the fact that like my budget can't afford to eat out every single meal for the entire month of December. I think another way to go about this is on a day free that you just overcook a meal that you're making so then you can maybe spread it throughout the week to eat at lunch or to eat when you come home for dinner because honestly eating out is just absolutely going to happen because you're exhausted and you need something now and also like i said i actually do like eating out so certain foods make me really happy i remember there was a really good Korean place that was like takeaway right by the Coliseum in London and I loved going there for my lunch. It was not cheap, but it was so good. Last and final tip is to take a moment to just be grateful because I know that we absolutely cannot just hold things in and pretend like things don't bother us and pretend like we're not tired because we already do that on the stage, you know? When you're on the stage, you just smile and you try to like disconnect from any pain or uh, maybe you're bored of doing the same role 30 times in Nutcracker. It happens because having to do that many shows, it's really hard to stay inspired although I gave all these tips, you know? So of course you're gonna mouth off about it and of course you're gonna be tired and just not be into it certain days and you just gotta go on and get on with it because that's your job and you just have to do it. But I think it's important to remember that like, you know, 10 year old you would probably be like so happy to know what you're doing now and what you've accomplished and just to be on the stage at all a professional stage a pre-professional stage doesn't matter i mean that's amazing like if i look back at little me and i think wow like she would be really happy with me i get paid to do this it's my job to do this i get lots of opportunities to be on the stage i've even gotten to dance around the world and I've met so many awesome people this way and I get to do, I mean, just all these ballets, like Giselle was one of my first ballets I ever watched, Nutcracker was one of them. So just a little bit of perspective and to just feel grateful sometimes at the end of the day is really helpful and can kind of ground you a bit and bring you back to, okay, even though it's hard, it's the dream coming true even though you love something and you're passionate about it doesn't mean that there aren't going to be days that you don't feel that way <laughs> because otherwise i think that you're just lying to yourself okay that's all of my tips i know i say that i always hope that this helps you but like actually nutcracker runs can be really hard and draining and you burn out and I really do hope that maybe one of these ideas can like click for you and you can take it with you and really put it into the next shows that you've got going. Stay healthy, good luck, and you're gonna be okay. If this is your first video here, hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. I post every Wednesday. I give a lot of insight into my ballet dancer life. I am actually a soloist at the Bayerische Staats Ballet in Munich, Germany, so I am like the real deal. This is my full-time job. I'm just trying to also get on YouTube and to start this um, because I think it's interesting for people to get into our lives and see what it's like. This is way too long of an outro, so I'm just gonna cut myself off and I hope I see you next time. Please like and subscribe if you liked it and if you like me and bye.